Hello everyone, welcome to a video about Gypsy Jazz Rhythm Guitar. Before we get started, I want to ask your attention for a colleague of mine. He just started a YouTube guitar channel. Now he's a great guitar player in several styles, not only jazz, fantastic jazz guitar player, but also world music, tango, but also pop and blues. And he just started a channel about I think about mainly about pop and blues. And it, the channel is in Dutch because he's a Dutch guitar player. And uh, I think it's important for us guitar YouTubers to help each other out, especially when you're just starting. Because the YouTube algorithm won't really start working unless uh, your channel is growing. And your channel can only grow when people actually watch your videos and then uh, like and subscribe. But you need the algorithm for that. So it's, it's very difficult in the beginning to get this ball rolling. But uh, if you are Dutch, because th again, the channel is in Dutch, go check out uh, his channel. His name is Elliot Musus, and there will be a link, will be the top link in the description and also in a pinned comment and go give it a look and let's help him out by subscribing and liking the video and even commenting. Because I know that when his channel will grow, he will produce some really stellar content that I would also like to watch. So. Uh, let's support Elliot. And now to the topic of today's video. I know I've made a bunch of videos about that already. I made a tutorial in which I show you the basics and I made a series called Christian's Rhythm Workout in which I show you the exact voicings I play for uh, well-known songs and there's backing tracks and all kinds of stuff. Go check that out if you want. There's links to all of that in the description. Now I noticed that one of those videos, I think it's the video in which I show you that the basic technique is now well on its way to 120,000 views, which is something I really didn't notice until I checked that video just randomly last week. And I was watching the video again, and I still like what I said there. I mean, everything I say in that video is still true. It's the way I play rhythm, and it's the way I like rhythm to be played. But then I started thinking, you know, I say these things, and um, they make sense because it, it feels like it is what I'm doing. Those are the things that I'm trying to do myself. But I was wondering how much of it is really what I'm doing. Right? I can say these things, I can think these things in my head, and I can attempt to do it. But when I actually play with them, is it in fact what I'm doing? Or is it something different? Or maybe there's more to say about it that I'm not saying. So what I did is I recorded my rhythm playing up close both left and right hand, just with my normal camera, the camera I'm filming now at a normal speed, 25 frames per second, which is the speed I'm always recording my videos in. But then I also pulled out my high-speed camera setup from the storage room and filmed myself playing rhythm with 100 frames per second. Now, I rarely use that setup because there's not so much use for it. I, when I bought it, I was thinking, you know what, I'm gonna film myself a lot with high-speed cameras, but then I didn't, but now I did. So it's 100 frames per second. I could go even faster, but then the image starts getting pretty bad. So 100 frames per second means I can slow it down to 25% of that speed and still get 25 frames per second on screen. So there won't be any difference between the quality of footage between the normal speed, the 25 frames per second, and the slowed down speed, which is filmed originally at 100 frames, but then slowed down to 25 frames per second. Now my plan is to just show it to you, and there's two songs. There's first All of Me, and then there's Limehouse Blues. All of Me at 180 beats per minute, and then Limehouse Blues at 280 beats per minute. So I'm gonna show it to you, and I want you to notice what you see in the comments. So I'm gonna crowdsource the observations. Of course, I'm gonna watch myself, and I'm going to make notes about everything I'm seeing, and then I'll make a follow-up video, at least when I see that this video is doing well and people actually like the idea. I'm gonna make a follow-up video and share with you the best observations. Now I assume a lot of it will be things that I already said in previous videos, but that doesn't matter because that would just be a confirmation of the things I said in earlier videos. So that would be good. But maybe there's something that is a little different from what I was saying, or maybe there's much more to say about it. Now one thing I'm gonna tell you before we watch those videos is that my style of rhythm is a particular style of rhythm that is not played by everyone. It's a style that I like and I've noticed that it is a style that many people like 
And I know that because, of, well, there's many views on this video. And also, I've seen several forum threads on different sites uh, with people discussing this rhythm and how to practice it. So I know there's interest for it. But one criticism I hear a lot is that there doesn't seem to be a lot of harmonic information in the way I play rhythm. Because my rhythm playing is very short and it, the chords are muted, right? You don't hear this. You hear... It's very short and it's a lot of percussion sounds. Uh, could be maybe compared to a drum set even. Even though, of course, it is still a guitar and you can still hear it's a guitar. And there is still harmonic information. Just not in your face harmony. And that's the way I like it. That's the way I like to play rhythm because I want the rhythm guitar to mainly have a rhythmic function, not so much a harmonic function. Now, it's important to play the right chords. And if I would play a wrong chord, you would immediately hear it because you can still hear the movement of the harmony, but not so much that, for example, the piano player couldn't also play chords on top of it, maybe with some alterations and that it would clash with the chords I'm playing. They would never clash because the, the sound is very unassuming and muted. Now, I like this style of rhythm and I think it's very functional. That means that it's meant to be played as a comping pattern, right? With a, with a bass, for example, or uh, with other instruments. But there's always a solo player. So if you hear this rhythm by itself, you might think, well, it doesn't sound very uh, appealing or there's not much tone. But if you hear it in a group context, it is very driving and it is very swinging. And that's the way the rhythm is meant to be heard in a group setting. So I get a lot of this comment or criticism when I play rhythm just by itself. But I've never heard anyone say it in a video that also has a solo player. So I'm going to link also my latest video in which I play Django solo to Limehouse Blues. And the way I play rhythm in that video, but there's also many other videos, is exactly the way I play rhythm in this video. It's just more functional because it's comping. Right, so keep that in mind. So you, you can still comment like, I don't hear a lot of the chords, but that is by design. And that's the way I like to play rhythm. And I admit that if I would be playing alone, just rhythm alone, and there would be no one else, it might maybe benefit me to have the notes ring more. Although I think there's a certain appeal to this short, dry sound by itself also. But that's in the eye of the beholder, of course. So let's go to all of me. And first you'll see it in the regular uh, speed at 25 frames per second, and then you'll see it uh, slowed down. Still 25 frames per second, but it was slowed down from uh, 100 frames per second. And then after all of me, I'll be back and just say something about Limehouse Blues. Here we go.
So that was all of me at a, a medium tempo, 180 beats per minute. And now I wanna go to Limehouse Blues, which is much faster, 280 beats per minute. But before we do that, a few words from my sponsor, which is the Van Hamert System Book. That's right, my own book is sponsoring this video, which is true, because it's one of the things that supports me being a content creator. It's a book about how to learn to play jazz guitar from beginner level to advanced level, maybe even pro level. And I made a short advertisement video for it last year, and I'm just gonna play it for you right now. And after that, I'll be back with my thoughts about Limehouse Blues. <laughs> Hello everyone, you just listened to a jazz guitar solo on the chords of the tune Ergin. If you are a guitar player and you always wanted to play jazz but had no idea where to start, I have a solution for you. I just released a book called The Van Hamert System, which describes the system I used myself to learn how to improvise like you just heard. The methodology is completely based on learning a couple of shapes across the guitar neck that will enable you to improvise on every jazz standard you can think of. Of course, it's gonna take a while to become proficient at playing those shapes and how to apply them, but you don't have to learn anything else. No music theory, no skills, no arpeggios, no fretboard identification, no ear training, just learning those shapes and how to apply them. That's what I did myself and you just saw the result. If you are interested in learning to play jazz guitar like that and you are in the US, order my book in the web store of jungleguitars.com and if you are in Europe, send a mail to this email address. Bye. So Lama's Blues, like I said, is much faster. It's 100 beats per minute faster than all of me. And I think a lot of the same observations can be made. But I'm also interested to see if you spot differences between the medium tempo and the fast tempo. Maybe there's something else that happens in my right hand or left hand that has to do with the faster speed. I assume it does, but uh, you never know. I haven't made a close study of the videos myself yet, so I still have to do that. But I will do it and make notes. And again, I also want to invite all of you to write down any observations that you might have in the comments below. Of course, you could read the comments to see if your particular observation already has been made. And it doesn't matter, you can make the same observation, but maybe you could add a detail or maybe give another angle to that observation. Anything that you think would be useful or even if you don't think it could be useful, put it in the comments. I'll read them all and um, I'll make a follow-up video with the most useful observations that I think are there. So here is a Limehouse Blues. <laughs> Thank you.
that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. But there's more to come, right? There's a follow-up video, hopefully. That depends a lot on how successful this video is. So it's important for as many guitar players to see this video. So I want to ask you, like I always do, to like the video, uh, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Not because it's something that I think I should say, but really it's because it helps my channel, it helps this video, it helps the YouTube algorithm to pick up the video and recommend it to as many guitar players as possible. And that's what we need, of course, to get the best observations. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye. <laughs>